So you get different colored players with their coward dice, their attack dice, and their wager chips. The wager chips, of course, are attack or coward. There's a sheriff that'll stop play in an area, and then there's the first player token. To decide who goes first, you take the bottle and spin it. And wherever it lands, that'll be the player that goes first. That person there will decide which of the six places to not use. Say, for example, I'll get rid of the mine. The mine's gone. Take all its stuff, put it back in the box. Now we're left with just these five zones here. These five zones get set up. They have their cards here. Train, stagecoach. Let's move these to the bottom here. Set up a little fast and dirty for my uh, review page here. A little fast and dirty never hurt nobody. So, you got all that set up. This is whoever gets uh, the most saloon cards will get this card. Whoever gets the most bank cards will get this card. Train, so on. If some, the first person to get one of each of them will get this card. This is on this town. On the town. Claimed by the first player to possess a loot card from every location. So if you get one loot card from each location, you get that. You get the extra 15 bucks. Well, I'm going to go over that now. The whole point of the game is as many bucks as you can get. So as you duel out for these places, you'll get cards that have various values. Or there'll be traps or whatever. But whenever you get to the end of the game, you add up your total dollars that you've robbed. And that's how you can tell if you win. So, how do you tell if you win? You'll take turns as players. Going round and round, starting with the first player. Wagering on the stagecoach, on the areas. So whoever's first player is going to say, no one can rob the bank, he's on patrol there. I'm going to wager secretly with my three tokens. Everyone's got two guns and one coward. I'm going to wager secretly, say, on the stagecoach. Next player is going to wager secretly on the train. I'm going to wager secretly on the brothel. They're going to wager secretly on the saloon. Now, here's the deal. We've each got one in each place. If... I don't wager here, they get one for free. So if I wager here, he's going to get the saloon for free. If I wager here, he's going to get the train for free, because that's the split. Now, he's got the same problem. If I say it's train, stagecoach, or brothel, he's going to say probably stagecoach. That's why this game is probably three-player. Uh, one second. One small variation. Since I'm doing just two players, it's supposed to be locations is the number of players plus one. So we're going to take these last two ends out here for the mode we're playing in the demo. So a little clarifying. Sorry for the confusion. Now, so in two-player game, it's two plus one. So, of course, we're just going to wager the same spots. And you play your strengths. So now I've got two die here and one die here. They've got two die here and one die here, but we don't know what die until we reveal. So when we flip them over, I've got a coward and a gun, which is my white die. It has one gun on it, one coward on it, and the rest are blank. My gun die has one gun on it, one bullet, and another bullet, and the rest are blank. So I have three bullets and a coward in this battle. He's got two bullets in this battle. Over here, obviously, it's going to be the other math. So, that's going to be the dive battles there. Since I'm just one person rolling, the way it's going to work is there's going to be a countdown. It's going to be three, two, one, and then any kind of pause you want. And then on draw, everyone's going to roll. And you're going to roll as fast as you can until you get a result. The other person's also going to be rolling as fast as they can, rolling, rolling, rolling until they get a result. But the first person that gets a result shouts hit. When they shout hit, rolling stops. You see it's an attack here, a bullet, and I ping him off. So he's gone, and I then take the card. In the event my hit had been a coward, instead, and I yelled hit, which I need to do because I rolled the result, all cowards would run away. So if he had two cowards there and I rolled a coward, both cowards would run away, and that would be to my advantage. But unfortunately, I'm the only one with a coward, so only my coward would run away, which is a disadvantage. And then I stop using this dice. So for the next roll, on the 3, 2, 1 draw, it's roll your dice as fast as you can. Again, I'm just one human here, so 
but it's furious, so hit, and then this goes away, and then I end up do getting the card. This card is a safe found on the train. Let's try to focus that in a little bit. Roll two shooter dice four times. If at least two of these are hits, gain a loot. So at the end of a round. At the end of a round, I can play that and get another loot. It's a gamble, but it's worth it. And then on to the next one. Obviously, the next one's going to be weighted the other way. And we'll do some rolling at 3, 2, 1, draw. Now, for example, if someone says, why draw? And you're like, well, if you say 3, 2, 1, go and roll, you've made a foul. So in a foul event, the person who rolled on go instead of draw then has to count down 3, 2, 1, draw on himself while the other person's rolling furiously. So I'd get a 3, 2, 1, hit, right? So I'd get a hit while there's, they still can't even roll their dice because they fouled. So that's a pretty fun uh, rule there. That is, in most part, the entirety of the game. Things I didn't make very clear, again, was this spin the bottle here. Spin the bottle for who goes first, who decides what places not to use, place the first sheriff, and so on. And then this is the first person token. So after a round, we've each won, and we each got a train, a stagecoach. The marshal is going to mosey on to somewhere else by whoever the sheriff is. So the sheriff is now on the stagecoach now. Cool. So now we can only wager on these two. There are fun event cards in these, so you may not get as much money as you want, but you can get something. There's one called uh, Indecent Exposure, which forces your opponent to play cards face up. There's another power card that you can get called um, uh, something like Behind Enemy Lines or something, or Ears in every, Everywhere, where you can actually wait to bid until everyone's bid. So in like a four-player game, you got a lot of bidding going on. You could actually go last, and in any place where there's like one or someone left blank, you could then place all three of your tokens to get a super advantage in that one place if you'd like. Now that's not as great because you're leaving all the other places to be bid on and won by somebody else, but it's closer to a guaranteed one. So the strategy is immense because it's more that you want to play spread out across the whole map every round so you get a chance as many cards as possible. And in other events, you may have one of all four, but you need the one last one. So you would wager all in one place to try to get that last one to get that 15 bonus points. Because it can come down to, when you do all the math, as simple as a $15 difference. Where they're actually up by 10, you get this card, and then you're, you're actually up by 5. And that's how you win the game. So it's careful, careful strategy there, trying to figure out what it is. The artwork, I mean, I haven't really focused in on this yet, but the artwork is just fantastic. Really thematic, old world stuff, some bank, the train, stagecoach, just beautiful locations. Nice clean artwork. You got some shading going off there into the edge, like some vignette kind of shader going on there. Saloon, the font. I mean, this is really nice. And then the gameplay itself is mechanically and thematically fantastic. Three, two, one, draw. Roll as fast as you can. Yell, hit. I mean, that's just a great... Quick dice game, um, really easy to get into, want to understand. Pretty uh, family friendly, even though there's a brothel. I didn't think of any any cards that were kind of too naughty. I mean, there's no nudity, no foul language, unless you bring that to the game yourself. So if you're more of the college crowd and you want some nudity and foul language, get naked and swear uh, while you play. But that's there's there's room for every crowd there. Um, Good fun to have. Good fun game. And I want uh, to thank uh, Ellen and Mike who sent it along to me. Uh, I guess they're friends or, or acquaintances with Isaac Epp. So I'm just glad to have had the chance to review it. Thanks. Thank you for checking out United Geeks Network Family Member. If you enjoyed it and are looking for other online media with a geek culture slant, head over to unitedgeeksnetwork.com where you will find... Geeky Voyage, a geek and pop culture blog that explores a variety of fandoms and many pop culture favorites from film, television, music, and various other topics, with liberal doses of humor, quirky musings, and heavy fangirling thrown in. The United Geeks Network. You can broadcast your geekiness at unitedgeeksnetwork.com.